Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Celebrating Act 2. And I mean everybody, including John Coleman, uh, who's been... Uh, uh, were you fourth? Do I have to welcome you back from being fourth or from a trip? As, as the great Ricky Nelson once sang, I'm a traveling man. Wow. So well, Across welcome back, sea. John. Where, where thank you, you been thank you. I had a great to? trip. Great trip, and I want to share it with everybody because... I discovered a couple of things for myself that I think are important in this age of COVID. Uh, number one is that the airports and the airplanes all appear to be full. Wow. That's number one. There's a lot of talk about scare and COVID and all this and all that. And um, apparently a lot of people are working on it and extra shots and more people should get shots and booster shots. But believe me, most of the population is out there traveling. Wow. They're they're in the airports. There was no surfeit, I think, is surfeit, surfeit of travelers. Um, the other thing is, and in there for people, you know, wait, wait, for, for, for the ordinary folks, so that you mean there was no shortage. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say, but I don't okay. like that short talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, they have to wear a mask through the whole flight. Now, while I'm traveling from west to east. So this was a cross-country flight, six hours. Uh, actually, I had a stop in between, you know, a layover. But the point is, if you can't wear a mask for six hours, don't get onto an airplane. Hmm. Um, I went to New York, and the in the middle of my trip, the new New York law went into effect about asking people to show proof of their vaccinations. Really? So I had, uh, not very often, I think maybe three times, I had to pull out my vaccination card. I really, really don't like that. I don't like that on any number of levels. Um, but I think I don't like it because it's not practical. It, it you know... First of all, I hear that they're now they're now counterfeiting your vaccination card. Yeah. I, uh, I think that's to be expected. So you feel you like know. a teenager again, going into a bar for a drink. Yeah, with a fake ID. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So um, that that's the other thing you can expect if you go somewhere. Depends on where you go. You're going to be carded now. Mm. Um, but I noticed that. Uh, in New York, in any way, I went. I traveled around the New York metropolitan area, so Long Island, New Jersey, um, Westchester County, Orange County, across the Hudson River, uh, tip of Pennsylvania, um, where New Jersey and Pennsylvania meet, and um, and then City Island. I was in City Island for uh, a lot of days, so I noticed that um, most people uh, have a mask. And don't wear it. You know, if you if you went into a store where they required a mask for some reason, people could pull it out. Um, I just went to the Apple store last night back here in California and forgot my mask. Wasn't thinking about it. And they first right inside the door, there's an Apple employee with a box of masks here. Take a mask. Thank you very much. I think that's smart. I think that's the way it ought to be. But I you know, everybody ought to carry a mask as well. So there's lots of opinions about that. But in terms of travel and practicality, I, I don't think there's anything stopping people from travel except their own fear. So so, let me ask, so, uh, so you did the travel, and then you were at a high school reunion. I, I went to, I, I made uh, this a very full trip. Pardon me while I change my volume here. Um, I went to a high school reunion, so I hung out with old high school friends, um, did lunch with people, visited relatives, um, a family reunion, if you will, but just really visiting relatives, did some research on family history, visited a college friend. So I was a busy, busy boy. Now, while you were doing this back in New York, which uh, sort of has the COVID thing somewhat under control, 
were you wearing masks at the reunion or with other family members? What did that all look no. like? No. So everybody was pretty no. comfortable. Very, very as few long people as I, were. As long as they felt you were vaccinated, they didn't care. Or they didn't even ask. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think like most people, well, first of all, I was with people I knew. Mm. Most, you know, 90% of the time I was with somebody I knew. Yeah. And so I think most of us assume that um, if you were ill or you thought you were compromised somehow, you would say something to somebody. Oh, you know, it's, it's like when you have a cold. Oh, don't kiss me. I've got a cold. You know, that kind of thing. So um, I think the general assumption, the default assumption is that you're healthy. So hugging and kissing wasn't a problem with the friends and relatives. Um, but I don't go into a store or a restaurant to hug and kiss. So if they require a mask, I pulled my mask out. Um, again, until that law took place, so I went Wednesday to Wednesday, the law took effect on a Monday, right in the middle of my trip. Mm. And until that law took effect, re really only the only thing people would do is ask you to put on a mask, um, and that, that was it. You know? So and most so would it be, be fair to say uh, one of the takeaways is if people are beginning to travel now based on your experience, and granted it was back to the New York metropolitan area, but uh, probably any place, certainly in the United States, uh, is uh, carry masks with you because that might preclude you from entering and not entering certain places. Yeah. And bring your vaccination card uh, because well, now, you may get yeah, asked for that and they may prevent you from, from entering certain uh, venues. Sure, but I think it's, it's state by state. Uh, yeah. So if you went to, I'm, I'm making up a state, if you went to Tennessee, you might not need your vaccination card. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's good to, find out ahead of time where you're going, which I think most travelers do. They Not only do you ask what's the weather going to be like in this place, but they ask, right. you know, what cultural things do I need to know? What legal things do I need to know? And in the age of COVID, travel is uh, requires that kind of questioning. Well, it's nice to have you back, John. Um, uh, I guess my break is over now. I, I was able to... <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy for a while, but I missed you, buddy. And uh, glad to have you back. Glad you had a good time. And um, uh, and glad that you are endorsing the fact that if uh, you either have to or want to travel, uh, people are beginning to feel safer and safer doing that. And you certainly yep. made it there and back, uh, none the worse for wear. Yeah, well, that's not, you know, my personal feeling and and everybody's going to react differently to travel and covid and having to produce your vax card and all of that stuff um so it's all of, i think it's a very personal decision but um i would recommend that people not fear um uh, fear anything I, I i my answer is get out and do it and be be practical about your safeguards well, thank you, John, and uh, uh, good advice to everybody. Um, I think I may just uh, get in the old wagon and get my vax card, my mask, and travel about. But we'll talk about that <laughs> at another point. Good. So, well, it's yeah. great to be back, and uh, and now we can get back to work, Art. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.